In this tutorial we are going to talk about self-drilling screws. For those of you who know them already, you know that they are a great invention because they allow us to work with metals without the need for prior drilling. They also increase your work speed and precision. What can be the downside? That, indeed, when they are not used properly, these screws can cause breakage and they can obviously make the anchors weaker. Some mistakes are made and that's just what we're going to go over. We will see what those errors are and what is the correct way to use this type of screw. This tutorial starts a whole series of videos that we are going to make in collaboration with Index Fixing Systems and its team of specialists in the design and application of these elements. They have a lot of information because they have a very powerful R&D and they are in permanent contact with the professionals who use the screws. For this reason, they know the problems that happen when they are not used correctly. For those of you who do not know yet what a self-drilling screw is, here it is. It is a normal screw at first sight, except that in the tip it has a bit that allows us to drill directly, before all the threading of the screw begins to set. Well. The first error that we should correct is that sometimes we don't choose the right length of the drill. Let's see with sheet steel of different thickness that we have here what happens when we do not choose this measure correctly. Here you have, for example, two different screws that, among other things, have different point lengths. To start seeing the first error, we are going to do the test of introducing this screw in a sheet and see what happens. What is happening when we drill with this screw? Well, as you can see, we have managed to insert the drill without any difficulty, but what happens? That the distance that the drill has made is not enough to allow the threading of the screw to be fixed. You see that it is turning, rotating, without making a way to enter. Even if it managed to get in, since I keep pushing the torque a lot to be able to insert the drill point, I run the risk that, as I am screwing with such a high torque, it may even break the screw. You see that, when the bit is adequate, we are drilling without difficulty and, once the bit finishes penetrating the entire thickness of the metal, it is when the thread begins to make its way and it threads like a normal screw. So how do we avoid making the mistake of choosing the wrong drill point length? Well, I have two very easy solutions. One is that I go directly to a table like, for example, this one that we have on the website of Index Fixing Systems, where it tells me exactly what the right screw is for the sheet thickness with which I am going to work. And another, when I cannot look for it, or must decide on the fly. I must at least keep in mind that the length point I have must be equal to or greater than the width of the sheet. That way, I'm sure I'm not going to be wrong. Another mistake relatively frequent. I have to work outdoors. To work outside, I have to use a stainless screw. But is it any stainless screw okay? No, I have to choose the right screw for the material to be screwed. To show you the difference, this is a zinc-plated screw that we usually use for interiors. These are stainless screws, which are screws for aluminum but not for steel. For steel, I have to use these which are by metal and have a tempering steel point that it will pierce the steel sheet without any problem. And the body and head are made of stainless material. When we try to screw the stainless steel onto sheet steel, we see that we end up consuming the bit. It cannot penetrate because logically we always need the drill point to be harder than the material we are drilling. In this case, after trying, all we have achieved is to flatten the tip. However, if we do the same test on aluminum, we see that it fits perfectly. Of course, bimetal is also valid for use on aluminum. So, in case of doubt, 
In the toolbox it is easier to always have bimetal screws that can be used to screw both aluminum and steel sheets. And, something important now that we are talking about outdoor placement. Another error is to directly place these screws on roofs or in places that are compromised by the presence of water and not use any insulation when I fix them. Logically, any screw I put in is a potential water inlet. Therefore, when we put this type of screws, whether they are galvanized, bimetal, stainless or any other type, with any kind of different head as well, we have this ring model with this neoprene protection that provides us with a perfect sealing gasket so that no water enters after its installation. Did you think we had run out of mistakes with self-drilling screws? Well no, there are more mistakes. Another mistake is that sometimes when we are drilling in sheets that are very very thin, like this one we have here that is barely a millimeter thick, if I use a bit that is too thick, I will find that, as it has very little space to thread, if also the thread does not fit well because I have opened it a lot, I will have slack in the screws. For this we have these special screws that are screws with a reduced drill point and you are going to see how they work. You can see the difference with a normal drill tip. Let's go to our next mistake. This occurs when I work, as in this case, with two profiles and they have a separation between them. Look, we have here an upper and a lower profile that are one eighth of an inch or three millimeters wide and, in the middle, a space of six millimeters. We have 12 millimeters, half an inch, in total. And that measure is what I have to consider, even if I have nothing between the two sheets. Because the calculation could be, as I have six millimeters of sheet metal, I am going to use a screw that has a 6mm drill point. Let's try to see what happens. What's wrong with this drill point? At first I am drilling without problem. I can drill my first 3mm sheet metal. When I drill it will jump until the next sheet. As long as I have a drill point working on the top and the bottom, nothing happens. But there will come a time when the bit continues to do a drilling job and at the same time tries to screw in from above. The torque that I am using for the bit can break the thread. If the screw is very strong, like this one I'm working with a one quarter of an inch metric, it may just feel like it hits, like it is blocked for a moment. I have continued pressing and the screw has endured it and has gone in well. But it is something I should not risk. Pay attention, if I switch to a slightly smaller metric now, 730 seconds, when that torque problem occurs, because the thread tries to work at the same speed that the drill is working, it starts to split. What is the logic that I have to follow in order to choose a screw? I have to add both the thickness of the top and bottom sheet as well as the space between them. This way I make sure that the drill finishes its work before the thread enters. Because you have already seen that, as soon as I force the thread, it is very likely that it will split. So I'm going to choose a screw like this one. In this case, it is a screw for beam has a point of one half. It is a special screw so that it has a type of threading that can completely cover the entire space where it is embedded and that, in this case is perfect for me to work with this measure. Both to work in the area where I have an intermediate span or to drill in the place where I have the full thickness of the three sheets. The last error has more to do with a slightly more technical aspect. How many screws of this type do I need to fix a load? The solution for this is very simple because on the web page at the end you have tables that give you information on the load that each screw supports, both in terms of shear stress and traction. The only thing that is important to know is that, 
When we talk about traction, I mean that if I put this on the roof and it weighs 100 pounds, I have 100 pounds of traction because the 100 pounds are exerting a downward force to get rid of the fixing. If I put it on the wall, this it is called the shear stress because the 100 pounds are not trying to pull out the screws but are exerting a lateral force to try to cut off their heads and tear themselves away from there. As you can see, these are very simple rules that will allow us to work much more safely with this type of screw. We will continue talking about bindings and very interesting things in this field and I hope you will like these videos. Thanks for your like, remember to subscribe to the channel if you are not already and share this video with all your friends who like the work of handy people.